before I start this segment, I'm going to assume that you have already watched our previous videos in our accounting equation. And in accounting equation, I have already explained you the basic terms and concepts of accountancy. You know the ultimate purpose of accountancy is to know about the profits of the company or firm made during the year and the financial position of the company or firm at the end of the year. You know balance sheet. You have already learnt about the balance sheet. Balance sheet is the statement of assets and liabilities. That's why it is called financial position statement. Before I start explaining you about general entries, I must tell you about the accounting cycle. In my previous episodes, I explained you the accounting cycle through accounting equation. But now, accounting cycle is based upon general entries. First of all, all transactions are converted into general entries. Maybe general entry or general entries is a new word for you. Don't worry, very soon I'm going to explain you. So let's come back to the accounting cycle. All transactions are converted into general entries and the general entries are converted into ledger posting. And on the basis of ledger posting, trial balance is prepared. And on the basis of trial balance, final accounts are prepared. And final accounts contain mainly two statements, income statement and the balance sheet. Income statement tells about the profit earned by the company during the year and balance sheet tells about the financial position of the company at the end of the year. I must remind you the accountancy we are learning at this moment. It is based upon double entry system. You must have noticed this thing. In the accounting equation, every transaction was hitting at least two items, whether it was minus or plus. In the same way, now we are going to convert the transactions into general entries. General entry means you have to find out two aspects of the transaction. One aspect is debit and another aspect is credit. Maybe these are new words for you, debit and credit. Don't worry, it's not a rocket science. Very soon you'll be able to understand all these things. So what I was trying to say, under double entry system, every transaction will be having two aspects, one debit and one credit. So to find out the debit aspect and credit aspect, you will have to create one table. Create a cross like the cross of church. So now you have got two sides, left hand side and right hand side. Now draw three horizontal lines, parallel lines. In this way, you have got three boxes on left hand side and three boxes on right hand side. At the top, on left hand side, please write down debit and on right hand side, please write down credit. So on the debit side, I mean to say on left side, number one, all expenses and losses. It means debit all expenses and losses. If there is any expense or loss in the firm or company, it should be debited. And on credit side, all incomes and gains. It means if there is any income or gain in the company, it should be credited. Now number two, on left hand side, I mean to say debit side, debit what comes in. It means if anything comes in the firm, that will be debited. And on credit side, what goes out? It means if anything goes out of the firm, that will be credited. Now on debit side, I mean to say left hand side, the receiver. It means the receiver should be debited. And on credit side, the giver. It means the giver should be credited. Be careful. 
now in the upcoming episodes we will be finding out the debit aspect and credit aspect of the transaction and then we'll convert it into journal entry to make the journal entry i mean to say to find the debit and credit aspect of the transaction you cannot disturb the order means the first of all you will have to write down debit all expenses and losses then what comes in and then the receiver you can't disturb the order in the same way on credit side i mean to say on right hand side i'm going to take the same questions that i took at the time of equations transaction number 1 a starts business with cash rupees 5000 before i start practical questions i would like to remind you something very important you must know about the separate entity concept under separate entity concept the owner and the firm both are different entities i am to say both are different persons the owner is a real person and the firm is a artificial person in this question the name of the owner is a and the name of the firm is classic bookstore and all the accounting is done from the point of view of firm i mean to say classic book store and one thing more it's a very tricky term and you must know about it and that tricky term is investment actually in accountancy the investment term will be used from two points of view number 1 investment of the owner in the firm and number 2 investment of the firm as an asset for example a starts business with cash he arranges 5000 from his own resources and he arranges 3000 as long term loan from the bank in this way he invests rupees 8000 in the firm or in his company that will be investment of a in the firm and second term is investment of the firm if the firm has got some surplus funds and the firm decides to invest it somewhere else i mean to say outside the firm to earn some money to earn some dividend or interest and that investment in the bonds or securities outside the business will be called investments of the firm and that is treated as an asset and this asset is shown in the balance sheet on the asset side as an investments so let's go back to the first transaction a starts business with cash rupees 5000 technically speaking when a starts business it means a brings rupees 5000 and gives cash to the firm firm means this classic book store and this rupees 5000 will become the liability of the firm that is called internal liability means liability towards the 
corner. So in this situation, when A starts business, means A gives cash to the firm, A becomes the giver and firm becomes the receiver because firm has received money and A has given money. Now let's create debit and credit of this transaction. Create a T or cross on left hand side write down debit and on right hand side write down credit. So we'll start testing this transaction on different situation. Number one, debit all expenses and losses. A has given money to the firm. It's not expenses. It's not loss. Then move to the second option. Debit what comes in. Means if anything comes in the firm, it should be debited. So you know in this transaction, the firm has received money. Means the cash has come in the firm. It means you will write down cash. Be careful. We are doing all this transaction from the point of view of firm. Means firm has received money. If we think from the point of view of A, the money has been paid. But if we think from the point of view of firm, the money has been received. So in this situation, the money has been received by the firm. So debit what comes in. It means whatever the comes in the firm, it should be debited. So in this transaction, the cash has come in. So write down cash. So we don't go to the third option because we have already got this thing. Now move to the credit side. I mean to say right hand side. Number one, credit all incomes and gains. Is there any income or gain for the firm? No. The firm has received money. Now firm will do the business. If there's any profit or loss, that will be transferred to the owner. So when A starts business, means A introduces capital to the firm. It's not an income, it's not gain. Now move to the second option. Credit what goes out. If anything goes out of the firm, that should be credited. Anything going out? No. So second option is gone. Now come to the third option. Third option is credit the giver. The money has come in and who is the giver? The giver is A. I mean to say the owner of the firm. So write down A. Or you can write down the owner. So we have got the debit. We have got the credit. Now we have to create journal entry on the basis of this table. Now draw two horizontal lines, parallel lines, and then draw some vertical lines. Number one for date, number two for particulars, number three for LF, number four for debit, number five for credit. In this way, we have got one, two, three, four, five columns. So first of all, write down the date. In this question, date is not given, but the serial number is given. So we'll assume that this is the date and this is the serial number. So write down number one. So first of all, write down cash and at the corner of the vertical line, write down DR. D should be capital and R should be small and then full stop. So you know how we write doctor, DR, but this is not doctor. This is the short form of debit. And one thing more, write down account after cash, means cash account debit. So A slash C, that's the short form of account. So cash account debit, now come to the second line. Leave some spaces like you do in the writing paragraph and then write down two and then capital and then write down account to capital account means cash count debit to capital account. It means cash count debit capital account credit. So we don't write down capital account credit. Instead of that, we write down to capital account. So this is the system. Please don't ask me why we are not going to write down credit word. This is the format. This is the presentation created by accountancy people. So write down 
rupees 5000 in the debit column and then write down 5000 rupees in credit column and in the column of particulars in the bracket you should write down the narration narration means the transaction so you will write down being cash introduced by a as capital because this general entry has been passed on the basis of this transaction no need to write down amount means being cash of rupees 5000 introduced by a as capital it's sufficient being cash introduced by a as capital so this was the presentation so what we have done we have created two aspects of the transaction one debit aspect and one credit aspect and what did you notice that we write down the word account as suffix and secondly when we pass general entries we write down cash count debit but we don't write down capital account credit so this is the format or you can say this is the presentation of writing down general entries so you have seen how i have converted the transaction into general entries on the basis of specific rules